Welcome to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. I'm Nick Capozzi, and I am I am on day five of Razzball's 32 drafts, 32 cities, 32 days. I am in lovely El Paso, Texas, and just for the record, it is very, very, very hot in Texas. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but sweet mother of goodness, is it hot here? I thought Phoenix was hot. This is day five. We've already hit Seattle, Oakland, San Francisco, San Diego, Phoenix, and now I am hauling to get to Dallas. We are in Dallas tomorrow to do another great draft there. Now behind me is actually not El Paso. That is actually Juarez, Mexico. I'm on the University of Texas El Paso campus right now, and you can see Juarez there. Interesting fact, Juarez is actually the most dangerous city in the world. Someone dared me to go across and get some tacos. Now, I love authentic Mexican food as much as the next guy, but you know what? I can smell the crime from here. All right, we're going to talk a little bit of fantasy football, but before we do, I just want to go over a couple of scorecard issues happening on the tour. So I'm trying to keep the best scorebook, card, whatever that I can here as I go through this crazy adventure. Now, I am by myself today. I don't know if you noticed, but I am going to be picking up Razzball guys possibly soon as tomorrow, dragging them with me so we'll be able to do some more interviewing as opposed to just me here jammering on about fantasy football. But back to the scorecard. So, so far, we have done just shy of 4,000 miles on the road. Obviously, the West Coast, you can see the map there on the truck, is where the long hauls are. I have never been this excited to get to the East Coast as I am right now. So we are doing the long hauls at this point. We have passed. Let me, let me give you some scorecard tips here. We have passed six brothels, legal ones, of course, in Nevada. We've passed an alien snack bar. I've killed at least 30,000 mosquitoes and butterflies. In fact, if you looked at the windshield right now on the truck, you can't really see through it because it is so full of bug carcasses. Uh, we have had 18 meals that included bacon. So the, there's a lot going on. Oh, and five drafts, of course, because this is Rasbol's 32 and 32 and 32, powered by the Fantasy Sports. Sports Network. Okay, let's get to some of the happenings going on in the fantasy football world right now. Let's talk about the running back situation in Buffalo. Now, we've talked a lot about C.J. Spiller. You got to get him in the third or fourth round. I loved him last year. I had him as the number two running back because he has that kind of upside, but obviously he's also going to make you a little bit crazy. So if you are going to get Spiller, you definitely want to handcuff with Bryce Brown. Now, Bryce Brown, you can get sometimes in the 11th or 12th round. And this guy's a really interesting running back. Not only is he extremely talented, go back and look at his history. Jumped around from college to college, was a five-star recruit out of high school. If he had maybe gone to a big program, potentially could have been a top prospect when he did enter the league, but that didn't happen. So he's been backing up the last couple of years. LaShawn McCoy in Philadelphia did a great job last year when called upon, had a 115-yard rushing game against the Bears. So the skill set is that is there. The issue with Bryce Brown has always been the fumbleitis. Butterfingers, oh my goodness. Boy, I could go for a Butterfinger right now, speaking of which. I wonder if they got any in Juarez. If he can hold on to the ball, not only will he become part of the rushing attack in Buffalo this year, and I think a big part, I think Fred Jackson's, with all due respect, days are number. Bryce Brown is a guy there that you want in dynasty leagues as well, but if he gets an opportunity, he could have a huge year up in Buffalo. I'm not even kidding. He's a guy that even if I don't have Spiller, I'm trying to get late in some drafts. So remember that name, Bryce Brown. If you're there, it's towards the end of a draft. You're looking for an upside running back. Why not? I mean, listen, how many times has Spiller gotten hurt? All Bryce Brown needs is an opportunity, and he might get it this year in Buffalo. Okay, let's talk about the New Orleans Saints running back situation. Now, Darren Sproles is an eagle, so he's not there anymore. Who's going to get the touches? Well, a couple things to consider. Pierre Brown, uh, excuse me, Pierre Brown. Oh, my gosh. It must be the heat in West Texas or the wafting crime from Juarez. Pierre Thomas, the PT Cruiser, not only is this guy an underrated running back, when he's healthy, he's versatile, and he catches the ball like a machine. How many balls is he going to catch with Sproles being in Philadelphia? That's going to be something to watch this year. A very interesting question. If he's able to get 50, 60, maybe 70 catches, especially in a PPR league, his value is going to jump up. He's the most experienced guy there because you're also dealing with Kiri Robinson. Now, Robinson's a bit of a grinder, lots of buzz. I'm seeing him go very high in drafts this year. In fact, I'm seeing him go occasionally ahead of Pierre Thomas, which is kind of nuts. So he is interesting to own, but Pierre Thomas is definitely the get there. Uh, Derek Strazier is also an interesting guy. He's a bit of a scat back. He might actually... 
it's, he's a rookie, so I don't think he's going to fill Sproles' role this year. Hey, that kind of rhymed. But he's an interesting guy to keep an eye on. But P.T. Cruiser, I think Pierre Thomas, is going to be the guy that you want in New Orleans. Okay, see you later, paper. Let's talk more New Orleans stuff. I want to talk about Brandon Cooks right now. This is a guy I'm seeing going very late in drafts, if drafted at all. This guy oozes potential. Now, consider this. Drew Brees is a lock for, let's say, 4,500 yards. But you know what? Could get up to 5,000. So let's break that down. Okay. Jimmy Graham stays healthy. Probably will. Probably get 1,500 yards. Marcus Colson, if he stays healthy, bigger question, 1,200 yards. We're at 27. Okay? You with me on the math? Good stuff. Please verify. If I made a mistake, let me know. At Nick Capozzi. Uh, 700 for the running back. So now we are at 3,400 yards. Who's going to get the rest of those 1,600 potential yards on the table? Cooks could be the guy. His ADP right now is 127. This guy is going to get more buzz as training camp goes on. Lots to like with him. If you could get this guy in the 11th round, 12th round, he has wide receiver, 3-4, Upside, you could probably get that kind of production, but you know what? He's so skilled, he could actually give you wide receiver two production this year. It's not crazy, I assure you. The heat hasn't gotten to me that much, but it is something you definitely want to consider. Okay, so, Brandon Cooks. What else we got? Where is my director? Where is my cameraman? Oh, my God, I'm living off Starbucks and Butterfingers. Let's talk about another sleeper wide receiver, Andre Holmes in Oakland. Now, look. You don't really want any part of fantasy when it comes to Oakland. Let's let's be. Uh, can we be honest with each other? You don't, there's, who do you want there? Really, you don't want Schaub. The running back situation is a mess, and everyone thinks Streeter, Streeter, eh, Streeter is going to go and get the receptions and the yards. But Andre Holmes came on late last season. Very skilled player, high upside, interesting guy. And now, he, not only is he already the number two wide receiver in Oakland, there is a chance that he might actually become the number one wideout. Okay, Matt Schaub sh sh throwing the ball to him. I understand. You want no part of Schaub. But you know what? Matt Schaub was th throwing to Andre Johnson the last couple of years. So you know what? Andre Holmes, another guy that is not even getting drafted, a guy that you definitely want to consider. Let's talk quickly about the Chicago Bears and the handcuff situation of Matt Forte. Now, obviously, I'm sure Forte is going to stay healthy. The guy has touched the ball a ton. He touched the ball a ton at Tulane, where he went to university. So handcuffing him is probably a smart idea. Kadeem Carey is a guy we've been talking a lot about. This guy's really interesting because not only does he have upside in dynasty and keeper leagues, he's a dynasty darling. He's also someone that if something were to happen to Forte is probably going to get the burn. So he's a guy that their bye week is week four. Grab Kadeem Carey late with your last pick if you're short on running backs because here's what will happen. Either they come to the bye week and Forte's been healthy, you drop him, you pick somebody else up, or potentially there's a chance that there might be more upside there. Okay, this is Razzball Radio. We're on the Fantasy Sports Network. We are continuing this crazy tour. We're going to talk more fantasy sports right after this. I was never one for traditional dating, which is why I like to meet guys on ArrangementFinders.com. Arrangement Finders puts a twist on dating that works so well, they guarantee you'll find a girl. That's right, guarantee. Sounds too good to be true? Check out these girls on ArrangementFinders.com who are looking to date. She's hot. She's hot. Okay, her, <laughs> not so much. Anyway, it's free to join. Go to Arrangement Finders and meet girls like me who know what you really want. Welcome back to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. I am still in El Paso, and one thing that people keep interacting with me, I'm doing my best to follow up with you on Twitter because, again, right now I am driving this boat solo. But people are going crazy for the truck. I stop at truck stops. I stop all over the place. People are snapping pictures. And I think it's interesting because we got the map here. So I'm going to give you a real quick recap of some of the stuff we've already covered. And you can go back to rasballradio.com and everything is there. So we kicked off in Seattle, had a great draft turnout. And Jared P Patterson of Rant Sports came out, gave us a great Seahawks update. So you can catch that on the August 4th edition, of course, at rasballradio.com. We then drove down, took a couple days, got to the Bay Area. We actually kind of we cheated a little bit in Oakland, okay, because um, Oakland can be a scary place. 
All right, maybe not as scary as Juarez, but still a little bit scary. What we did was we actually went to Sonoma County, and there Ryan Schellink, actually of Rasball, came out and joined us and gave us a great Raiders report. He was one of the first guys that pointed out Andre Holmes on this tour. So he is a guy that uh, actually uh, you want to consider again Andre Holmes, and Ryan filled us in there. More Oakland stuff, of course, on the Bay Area show. Now, San Francisco was a bit of a party. It was good times in San Francisco, and we had Uncle Leo from Rotoballer come out and give us a 49ers report. So what we're basically doing, guys, is we go through the map here. We are also giving you the team reports. Of course, they're all available at rasballradio.com. So did the Bay Area, went down to San Diego. Of course, of course J. Fo uh, from Rasball helped us out there with the Chargers report. Went to Phoenix last night. We had Jess Root from uh, Revenge of the Birds came in and helped us out with Phoenix. I am now pretty much technically, technically I'm about here. There's El Paso. We're going to work our way up to Dallas. Now in Dallas, we've got Ryan Hodge of Roto Hobo, excuse me, Ryan Hodge at Roto Hobo, of course, from Project Roto is going to come out and do the Dallas show with us. So thank goodness I will once again have a co-host so that's gonna be fantastic in fact I'm gonna see if I can kidnap Ryan for a few days so we're gonna go through Dallas do the Dallas report Houston we're going to the Houston Texans grill by the way if you want to come out and hang out with us we're getting great turnouts at all these locations rasballtour.com from Houston we are going to go to New Orleans now I gave myself two days to get from New Orleans to Tampa it's only about a nine hour drive but you know what if I'm gonna be in New Orleans Probably want to enjoy the evening. So from there, we're going to go through Florida, Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville, Atlanta, Charlotte, all the way up through the East Coast. And we will have great guests all throughout the country. But when we hit the East Coast, we're really going to get some dynamic guests. It's going to be a really exciting time. So that is what's going on with the tour. Okay, a couple more things. I want to talk about some of the things I've noticed in some of the drafts that I've participated in, because not only are we hosting these drafts, I am actually participating in a lot of them. And the reason is, is I get so caught up sometimes in the expert league drafts, because that's, you know, what we talk about. Where is this guy going? What's his expert consensus ranking? But you know what? Everything goes off the rails when we actually get down to, you know, your drafts, where you guys are hanging out with your buddies. And stuff goes crazy. I have seen Monty Ball fall to the third round. Now, I am worried about his appendix. It's going to be a, you know, a bit of a time for him to get used to uh, you know, rebuilding his core strength and, of course, um, getting back into game shape. But Monty Ball in the third round is ridiculous. I have seen kickers go in the eighth round. I'm not joking. So this is one of the most key pieces of information I can give you this year is that you really – you got your cheat sheet, sure – but you really need to make sure you know who's off the board, who's gone, and watch for when your buddies make mistakes. Don't just make fun of them, okay? So here's the other thing, too. We discussed this. The over-under for bev adult beverages that you should drink during a draft is about two and a half. If you really want to be competitive and have a shot at your draft, you need to stay below two because, look, do you want to beat these guys? Yeah, listen, the party's still going to go on post-draft. You're not going to miss anything. Keep it below two and a half and always be responsible, okay? No drinking and driving or I'll come up with a truck, bring it to prison myself. By the way, on the scorecard, I've driven past 14 prisons. Holy cow. All right, some other interesting things that have happened that I have noticed as we have gone along on the tour. First of all, America is beautiful. I don't know if you guys knew that. Did you know that? Southern Oregon into Northern California was spectacular. Okay, there wasn't much going on through Southern New Mexico, I'm going to be honest with you. But other than that, it's been a really great drive. Back to the drafts. So some of the other things that I've seen happen at drafts is people, I think, regular drafters, again, your friends, your coworkers, really feel the need to fill out their roster. Now, one of the things we've actually done this year is, you know, specifically try to use different strategies. So a couple times I've gone with the wide receiver, wide receiver, and then, you know, six running backs in a row. That's gone really well. But I find very few guys actually come in with a strategy for their draft. So what winds up happening is you're like, okay, I got a running back, I got a wide receiver, what do I need next? Oh, next on my list, tight end. Don't look at it that way. If this is a value game, it is all about getting the best value possible. And the only way you're gonna do that is by paying attention and understanding how the other drafters around you are conducting their draft. I mean, that's what you really wanna do is take advantage of your friends in the best possible way. You know what I mean? Okay, so, Go with a really firm strategy. 
don't feel tied. Don't feel you are absolutely stuck and have to, you know, fill out your roster because I've seen great value tight ends. I've seen guys going in the 12th, 13th, 14th round that in experts league drafts are maybe going as high as 7th. Again, are you playing in a 10-team league, a 12-team league? These are all things to consider when you're putting your strategy together. Together, But go in with a strategy. Don't go un unprepared. Don't just show up at the University of Texas El Paso next to Juarez and start shooting a show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course I'm prepared. Um, so those are a few things you definitely want to do. And also, one thing I've noticed, people still go in with the cheat sheet magazines. That was good in 2003. You should have some device with you, an iPad or, you know, uh, some sort of tablet. Uh, you know, if you want to have some notes structured on the side, but if you're actually just crossing names off a, off a piece of paper, the chances of you making a mistake are a lot higher. So bring a laptop. Does your bar have Wi-Fi? If not, make sure, or wherever you're drafting, have Wi-Fi. If not, you know what? Use your phone as a hotspot for the short term. But make sure that you're going prepared, you got the right tools, because I want you to win your league, people. By the way, speaking of leagues, if you want to play with uh, everyone at Rasball, we have the Rasball Commentator Leagues happening right now. Go to football.rasball.com. All the information is there. You can actually get in leagues with, you know, Rasball Commentators, with part of the Rasball crew, tons of options there. And, of course, when you are playing, this, is, this might be the most critical piece of information I give you today. And I busted out the Sports Vault shirt. I commissioned so many leagues. You know why I got sick of commissioning leagues? Because collecting money was such a pain in the neck. With sportsvault.net, they lock up your league fees for free. You don't have to worry about, you know, who's got my money? Am I going to get paid? There is absolutely no charge to this service. Great guys at sportsvault.net. Okay, Nick Capozzi, Razzball Radio on the road somewhere in West Texas. I am starting to lose my barnbles. Can you tell? Razzball Radio, Fancy Sports Network. We'll be right back, hopefully. I was never one for traditional dating, which is why I like to meet guys on ArrangementFinders.com. Arrangement Finders puts a twist on dating that works so well, they guarantee you'll find a girl. That's right, guarantee. Sounds too good to be true? Check out these girls on ArrangementFinders.com who are looking to date. She's hot. She's hot. Okay, her, <laughs> not so much. Anyway, it's free to join. Go to Arrangement Finders and meet girls like me who know what you really want. Welcome back to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network special edition, the one where I lose my marbles somewhere in West Texas. This is actually the back of the truck. Some people have asked to see it. It's a bit of a mess because my uh, production assistants are AWOL. So uh, there's some lighting gear, some baseball. You never know when you might need a baseball bat. You never know when a game might break out. Uh, I've also got the draft board here. So this is it right here. And I said special edition. I want you to pony up. Have a seat right here with me. I want to talk to you, ladies and gentlemen or gentlemen and a couple ladies, however it works out, about some guys who are going either too late or too early in the drafts I'm seeing thus far. Now, again, we're not talking mock drafts. We're actually having people do their own drafts. So these are real drafts. It is really in draft season. But with that said, there's some things that have kind of shocked me, and uh, so I thought I'd fill you in, give you a little bit of intel. One, here are some guys that are going too late. Rob Gronkowski, yes, he is an injury waiting to happen but that said when he's healthy he is the second best tight end in football and it's not even close he could even surpass jimmy graham i mean that's how good gronkowski is now if you took let's say demarco murray and julio jones in your first two rounds probably not a good idea to grab gronkowski but if you got guys with good track records of health like let's say calvin johnson and maybe livian bell gronk in the third round not a bad option especially i've been seeing him go fourth even fifth round some of these drafts ryan matthews another guy going way too late I think it's because he's left such a bad taste in people's mouths. Previous draft years, you know what? He was really good last year. It's a very balanced attack. Head coach loves him. Uh, Ryan Matthews, a guy that's slipping way too far. Here's one that could be really interesting. I've done a lot of drafts where I've taken wide receiver, wide receiver, and then six running backs in a row if I'm towards the end of the first round. And I'm getting Joyk Bell every single time in the sixth or seventh round. Now, he's not just a handcuff for Reggie Bush. He's a fantastic running back. He's actually very underrated. And, of course, you know, Reggie Bush is not a bastion of health. So there is the opportunity for Joyk Bell, and he could really seize it, especially that offense. That could be the number one offense in football this year. I'm not crazy. Well, maybe a little bit, but it could be the Lions this year. Matt Ryan, I don't know why. I think people still look at him as a game manager. But when you have the weapons on offense, the healthy and rejigged offensive line, 
Matty Ice is a pretty nice quarterback to have. I'm seeing him go sometimes as the last quarterback, which blows my mind. Chris Ivory. What? Was Chris Johnson good? I, I don't remember when. It's been so long, I can't remember the last time Chris Johnson was good. So Chris Ivory is a guy that is not even getting drafted in these drafts, which blows my mind. He's definitely a guy you want to get in the later rounds. Eric Decker, another guy that keeps sl slipping. I think that's based on people thinking, oh, he's going from Peyton Manning to Geno or Mike Vick in New York. Yeah, that's true. But who's going to get the targets there? Who's going to get the receptions? they got to throw the ball sometime. Decker's going to be that guy. I'm seeing him go in the 10th round in these drafts. He should be going way sooner than that. Another guy who's getting drafted, starting to get a little bit more buzzy now, but Emmanuel Sanders in that uh, Broncos attack could have a really big season. It's not crazy to think he could have 80 catches, 1,200 yards, and maybe 8 to 10 touchdowns. I mean, that is a solid uh, wide receiver, too. He's a guy that's going 8th, ninth, 10th round. Andre Williams, rookie running back for the Giants. You know what? Looked really good in camp. Interesting guy. Not getting drafted. If he is, it's the last couple of rounds. Why, why do you think Rashad Jennings is guaranteed a spot? Why? Why? I don't think so. Wait, has he ever done it over a full season? Talk to me about Andre Williams towards the end of the year. Some guys that are going too early as far as I'm concerned. Arian Foster, the guy was contemplating retirement. The guy is an injury risk. Don't spend your first round pick on him. I've seen it happen. Don't spend your second round pick on, on him. I see that happening in every single draft. Don't touch him in the second round. If he slides to the third, maybe. But I'm not buying Foster. You know what? Let someone else take the chance. If he has a big season, so be it. Andre Brown, though, remember all the touchdowns he got for uh, the Giants a couple years ago? Why can't he do that if Foster goes down? Andre Brown, another guy to consider late in the draft. Doug Martin, sure, he's the muscle hamster. He's got a cool name, had a great rookie year. But take out those two big games, he didn't have such a good rookie year. Lots of people to split the ball with in Tampa. I am not buying Doug Martin. I think he was he, – it wasn't a fluke two years ago, but he is – to me, he is not real. He is a mirage. I'm starting to see mirages too with all this time driving on the road by myself. Hey, look, a fish. Okay, uh, Victor Cruz, take out the three touchdowns he had in game one last year. You know how many he had the rest of the season? One. Why are you spending a fourth-round pick on him? Why? Why? Uh, Rashad Jennings also on that list. Fourth round, guys – he hasn't done it before, not over a full season. Let someone else take that risk. There is way more value in the fourth round. Don't try and hit on Rashad Jennings. And try and hit on someone else, not Jennings. Okay, Cordell Patterson, sure, I love the upside, but he might be the most uh, polarizing guy in this year's draft class. He's either going to be a boom or a bust. Yes, he looked really good towards the end of last season, but you know what? It takes a whole season. I'm buying North Turner, but if you got to spend a fifth-round pick on him, that is a lot of risk, my friends. Marcus Colston, third round in one of these drafts, which is bananas. His knees are made of jello, jello that's been slow cooked, like pulled pork. Okay, Colston, uh, scratch him off your list. Done. Uh, Steven Jackson, what do you think this is, people? 2008? Steven Jackson is not good anymore. He's no good. He's no good. Okay, a couple more guys that are going too late that I think could have great opportunities. One, I love Justin Hunter. I've talked about him a lot. Guy is a freak. He was actually considered the best wide receiver prospect in last year's NFL draft class ahead of Patterson, but didn't get the opportunity because, or there was concerns about his injuries, but looks healthy, looks good in camp. Riley Cooper. This is a good one because you know what? I like Macklin. Macklin is a guy I'm getting in a ton of my drafts this year, but Macklin doesn't have a healthy track record. So if he goes down, Riley Cooper, when he did get the opportunity last year, was really, 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 really good. And Riley Cooper could be good again. Sure, I don't like the guy personally, but you know what? He's a pretty good football player. Okay, I am packing this up. I am going to try and make it to maybe Midland, Texas tonight. I am just going because we've got to get to Dallas tomorrow. Ryan Hodge is going to join me from Project Roto. This is Nick. This is Rasball Radio. This is Fantasy Sports Network. This may be, I was going to say last time you see me. That's not true. This might be the last time you see me sane. I'm not saying right now. See you soon. Bye.